In this learning objective, we're going to look at an economic theory called efficient market hypothesis. And this has proven to be a very useful theory for evaluating how uh, capital markets as a whole react to the release of accounting information. So we're not looking at investors as people, we're looking at investors as a group of investors called the capital market. These are the people who buy and sell shares, who analyze shares and uh, analyze share movements and recommend buy or sell. So very important group of people uh, for accountants to communicate with, I'm sure you'll agree. So as we go through this, you'll notice uh, that it has uh, a very economics type of feel to it, economics language that it uses and the kinds of assumptions that it uses. So let's see if I can bring up my slides. Okay, so we're looking now at the efficient market hypothesis or EMH. So it's an economics model, it focuses entirely on the decision making of investors. It doesn't concern itself with any other form of stakeholders. So it's not interested in governments or banks, the tax office, uh, the newspapers, the unions, the employees, only shareholders. Uh, it has a set of simplifying assumptions, as do all models, and you'll read them and you'll immediately think that these don't really reflect reality. It's too simple. But the reality is that the efficient market hypothesis has informed much of what we know about accounting, investing, and corporate finance. And it continues to work for us. So uh, while it doesn't tell the whole story, it does tell an interesting story. So the assumptions that the EMH makes are that securities or shares, their prices reflect all currently known information. Uh, so the market isn't going to get surprised by something that's already been released. The release of information to the market is not controlled or manipulated by any individual or group for unfair advantage. So it assumes that, there are, that there's no skullduggery going on, there's no insider trading, um, information is released fairly to everybody and everybody has an equal opportunity to find and read that information. It assumes that security prices will immediately adjust to reflect new information. And I do stress the word new. We'll come back to that a little bit later. And my personal favorite, investors are rational people who make rational decisions. And I'll leave you to think about that and the reality of that situation. It's based on three forms of market efficiency. And of these, number two is the one that people tend to agree uh, reflects current reality. So number one is the weak form. That is security or share prices reflect information about the past. So what's happened in the past, what information has been re released in the past, what investors and, and investment analysts can work out about previous share prices concerning the firm, that's what security prices reflect. So the price of a share in Qantas, for example, reflects what people already know about it, not what they think might happen in the future. The semi-strong form says that prices will reflect all publicly available information in an unbiased manner. So everything, past information, predictions about the future, um, profit predictions, uh, corporate announcements, everything. All of this um, is priced into the current price of a share. And the strong form says that prices will reflect all information, public and private. So that's a little bit unrealistic uh, because you'd have to assume that most shareholders don't know the private information that is available to the management of a firm. So out of that three, we tend to believe that the semi-strong, number two, is the one that is that the share market in a capitalist system best represents. The relationship uh, with accounting information. So under this theory, the share price equals the expected cash flows into the future. 
discounted to its present value. So people buy shares and pay the price not on the basis of what's happening now or what's happened in the past, but what they expect to see into the future. So if you think that the cash flows and the benefits coming out of a firm don't match the price you're going to pay, then you tend not to buy a share at that price. Share prices will change on the basis of unexpected earnings information rather than the announced total earnings. Now this is important because a lot of people think that the efficient market hypothesis doesn't work because there's much, a lot of evidence of companies are now announcing profits and the share price doesn't move or perhaps the share price might fall instead of increase. And sometimes the reverse occurs. Companies can earn, announce a loss and the share prices can go up. So what's really happening? What's happening is that the market had already anticipated that information. There was nothing new. So whether you're announcing a profit, a loss or status quo, if the market was already anticipating that based on past announcements, um, then the share price isn't going to do much at all. So that's the key with the efficient market hypothesis. The share price will move based on unexpected information. So accounting information that is not affecting the share price has no value beyond what's already known. Uh, disclosures uh, especially voluntary disclosures, must be carefully thought out. So if you're going to make uh, a sudden disclosure that the market hasn't anticipated, you need to be aware of what might happen. So the efficient market hypothesis gives you some guidance in saying, if I put, make this disclosure, um, then the share price should go up. Or conversely, the market might not like this disclosure, the share price will go down. And sometimes, People make disclosures on the basis of they understand that the share price will go down. Sometimes firms will, will believe that the price of their shares are too high, they're too inflated. The true value of the firm does not reflect that price. And so they will take active steps to discourage that price. But the efficient market hypothesis always states that the market will react on unexpected information. So for accountants, uh, the, ch the challenge is to make the market work for you. Release information. If you want the share price to go up, release information that will encourage that. If you want the share price to go down, release information that will encourage the share price to go down. The market doesn't like being surprised, so don't spook the horses. There's been a lot of really interesting research findings come out using the efficient market hypothesis. Now, for, for instance, announcements by a major player in, in an industry can affect the share price of other firms in that industry. For example, if Qantas makes a huge un unexpected announcement that shocks the market, then Qantas shares might go down, but so might all the other major players in that industry. Uh, investors seem to fixate on earnings and profits, but firms with large accruals, in other words, accounting accruals, relative to cash flows, are unlikely to have persistent high earnings. So while investors seem to fixate on profit reporting, uh, they're savvy enough to work out that um, profits might be supported by accruals rather than cash flows. Uh, announcements of expected earnings do inf influence the share price and companies do get penalised if they spook the horses. Uh, companies who have a habit of making voluntary disclosures tend to have a bigger following of investors. And when you have more investors following you, it's a little bit like Twitter. You have more investors liking you, it's easier to get access to capital. So if you need to have another, release more shares to raise capital from the market, uh, if you already have a large and loyal following, uh, then it's quite cheap and easy for you to do so. Um, the efficient market hypothesis suggests that items that are actually listed as line items in your financial statements get given more attention and more credence by investors than uh, things that are simply disclosed in the notes to the financial statements. 
Uh, share prices in smaller firms generally react more to announcements. And share prices do tend to anticipate future earnings more than simply reflecting past performance. So in conclusion, I would like to say that the efficient market hypothesis, it's not perfect by any means. It is a bit simplified. Uh, and sometimes the assumptions do stretch credibility. However, it's been proven to be a useful theory over a long period and it has raised interesting and challenging questions uh, for accountants. So like all theories, it doesn't tell the whole story, but it can tell a useful story. So in the next presentation, I'll be looking at a very different form of theory, uh, one that looks at how individual investors might make decisions. And we'll be looking at psychology-based theorizing. So I bet you can't wait. So I'll better sign off now and then I'll do the presentation based on that one. Bye for now.